Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat, everybody. Happy voting day. <laughs> I hope everybody gets out there and cast your vote for whatever it is that you want to see. The change is on us, right? I am so super excited today to welcome Heather Messenger to the show, Miss Bikini Universe Pro now. She's not just a Bikini <laughs> Universe, but she is a pro, you guys. And she has had a, over a 55 pound weight loss, which then she began competing and she became a health coach. And she is a, she's totally all about postpartum awareness. And she is a self love advocate. Heather's mission is assisting women in recognizing their inner strength and teaching their physical, mental, and emotional goals through fitness, oh, reaching, sorry, uh, through fitness, nutrition, and supportive sisterhood. And that's what this is all about. It's about sisterhood. This podcast is all about women reaching their fullest potential together rising because all the boats rise when the tide goes up guys and we're going to build each other up on this podcast support one another and encourage and so i am so welcome to welcome my sister in sweat my savage <laughs> sister and my friend heather to the show hey linda thank you so much for having me on today i'm excited to be here yeah absolutely and uh we have kind of we've been competing together for a while and the last time I saw you you were strutting your stuff as Wonder Woman and I was Supergirl <laughs> yeah superheroes unite <laughs> I thought I had to I might have to borrow a few of your moves they were pretty sassy you can take them <laughs> they're all yours <laughs> oh my gosh so what uh got you started into competing what was that path like and what have you gained from being on this journey oh my goodness well athletics was always a part of my life a big part of my life um i was raised by my dad the majority of the time growing up so i was in sports at a very young age I ended up playing volleyball in college but my college career was um cut short when i had a minor heart attack so i moved home and that's how i put on all my weight and that's how now I have a, a weight loss story. But um, I was terrified to work out and I fell into this depression. So that's when I began to put on the weight after having the minor heart attack, get, losing my scholarship and moving home. Um, then fast forward, met my husband, had children, and I ended up um, suffering from postpartum psychosis. And that was a very, very dark time in my life. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Um, but a big part of that, my mom, we ended up living with my mom for six months. And as I was slowly starting to recover, she said, well, you know what, Heather, you used to be an athlete and exercise has so much to do with mental health. So why don't you start, why don't you get out of the house and start running? So since my husband and I were living with her, we, um, we started with walking cause I was out of shape for sure. Um, we started with walking and then running and as I ran, them, I just felt free, like moving my body just felt so free and those natural endorphins started. And then from there, I started focusing on what I'm eating because 90% of serotonin is made in our gut. And um, once I moved home, it it's a process getting over something like that. And I was diagnosed with PTSD from it. So keeping busy definitely helped. Um, and a friend of mine, after I had my weight loss transformation said, you're not too far off from competing why don't you compete? And when I looked into it, I saw that there's a plan that you have to follow. And I thought, how perfect now that I'm getting back into exercise and eating healthy, and I need to keep my mind busy um, because thoughts kept, would come back and you'd question them and then the anxiety would spiral down. So having a workout plan and a nutrition plan that I had to stick with and follow and focus on really helped me overcome those issues, the postpartum issues. Um, so it was a huge journey. It wasn't just a physical one. Like, yeah, the physical results were amazing. Becoming Miss Bikini Universe Pro was pretty darn amazing. Um, but the friends I met along the way, um, the muscles I built internally, mentally and emotionally, um, I'm so much more grateful for than 
the six pack that came with it. <laughs> so it's been an amazing journey. Well, I'm really a firm believer that beauty comes from the inside out. And so you just confirmed that for me because you really actually had quite the inner journey from like working on yourself on the inside and then all this beauty showed up on the outside. I mean, you mm -hmm. were beautiful all along, but I think you uncovered it more because you stepped into that. And what was it like, like you're, you're saying you had a, what, the, I mean, you had a heart attack. I mean, what was, what did they say caused that? You're so young. So I was 18 years old when it happened. It was during preseason, which is um, so the summertime right before the full season starts. And we had three, four hour practices a day, an hour workout in the morning. And I noticed my senior year in high school, my feet would start tingling and going numb during practices, um, but I didn't think anything of it. I just thought maybe my shoelaces were too tight. Um, and then during one of our practices, my entire body went numb in college and I lost control of my functions, <laughs> not to get too like into it, but, um, and so I'm like, okay, that's definitely not normal. And then one night I went home into my dorm room and like they always say the left side. So from here, up and down my arm, just shooting, shooting pain. And I was scared, so I started crying. And then the next thing I knew, I woke up. And I didn't know if I fell asleep or if I passed out. So my trainer sent me to the hospital where they confirmed that I had a minor heart attack. And after tests in Miami where I was going to school and then family took me to Mayo Clinic, um, they found that when I reach a certain activity level, the muscles in my heart get what are called vasospasms. Don't quote me on the pronunciation of it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so basically there's a major artery right underneath one of the muscles that was having these spasms and it was causing the artery to shrink and it was cutting off circulation to half my heart. So, wow, that's pretty serious. Yes. <laughs> wow. So that's why when I moved back home, I was terrified to exercise because exercise had done this to me. Um, but thankfully oh, yeah. I learned the 80, 20 rule that 80% of how you look, how you feel is what you're putting in your body, not what's going on in the gym. So um, I'm thankful for uh, fitness regimen through our lovely team um, that focuses mostly on nutrition and not the treadmill. There, I love that, right? I call it the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Because I read, of course, I like, I like to be outside. So when I'm doing a workout, I would rather be outside or be at the Sisterhood of Sweat teaching a boot camp and uh, just something a little bit more active than just being chained to the treadmill. Mm -hmm. uh, what type of, so you said you had anxiety. Was this mostly surrounding then having the heart attack? and then working out, or is this more like just, you just had anxiety? Um, at that stage of my life, when I was younger, there definitely was anxiety around exercising when I tried to get back into it and I would feel my heart start racing a little bit. I would just freak out and stop and leave the gym. Yeah, I mean, um, that, yeah, that's scary. Yeah, so that took a while, but once that faded um, and then the postpartum psychosis happened, and getting diagnosed with PTSD, I always, I believe the two most powerful words are I am and I have. And getting diagnosed with PTSD after overcoming all of it, I didn't want to label myself with that because I think that allows you to fall into things, you know, like, oh, I have PTSD, this could trigger it, this could trigger it, because then you're almost <laughs> triggering it yourself. So I never focused on that, but you can't, you can't control what's going to trigger you. So for a long time, um, our house was a trigger and just sometimes coming home or walking up the stairs to my daughter's room would trigger anxiety. And I thought, well, it's not going to go away. My house isn't going to go away. I don't want my children to go away. Um, so exercise has been a huge way of, of overcoming that anxiety, overcoming those triggers and personal development for sure. Yeah, I love that. So you basically got through all of that and then you got you got postpartum depression. Um, lead me through that and 
what the feeling was like when you had it, because I know a lot of moms are going to be listening to this podcast, and I just want them to know that they're not alone if maybe they have it, because sometimes I think people don't want to talk about mm-hmm talk about it or they don't want to they don't let someone know that they're suffering and they may need help out there so um just kind of go into that story and how that felt for the audience yeah so after my oldest daughter's birth it was like typical white picket fence like I, i dreamed it would be um going out showing off the baby felt great And then after our second was born, I knew the day we left the hospital, something just kind of fell off, but I'm like, maybe I'm just tired. I haven't slept in 48 hours. So I kept pushing it off, pushing it off. But then I noticed I was avoiding having family members come over. I wasn't taking the baby out to show her off. Um, I was ignoring phone calls. And then I just, everything started feeling off because I had postpartum psychosis, which is, kind of like postpartum anxiety, depression rolled into one and then times 10. Um, And that's not to say like postpartum anxiety and postpartum depression are so like, I feel for anybody who has to deal with them. But when I, once I was diagnosed with that, we were living with my mom because it started off as I could not sleep. I was pacing the floor. My husband's like, what is going on? It's like, I don't know. I feel like my skin is on fire. I can't control my thoughts. And I went from the bed to the couch, the bed to the couch, just trying to sleep, trying to shut off the voices in my mind. And my two-year-old ended up waking up. And my husband said, well, since you're already awake, why don't you go up there with her? And I just fell to the floor in tears. And he said, what's what's wrong? I said, I don't think I can go up there. And he asked me, he goes, why not? Do you think you're going to hurt her? And I said, yeah, I'm worried I will. And... um, God bless him. He was a tired husband. So he fell right back to sleep. So being the mom, I went, walked up the stairs. The stairs felt like there were a thousand of them. They just magnetized. Um, and I laid with her just tears streaming down my face, telling myself like, don't listen to the voices. Don't listen to the voices. Cause they were telling me to hurt her. And that next day we moved in with my mom and, um, I began to research postpartum psychosis and everything that I found was about postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression. And then at the bottom, there would be just like a tiny, tiny paragraph on postpartum psychosis. And it would say how rare it was and that there was high suicide and infant side rate with it. I was like, great, that's what I've got going for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't very encouraging, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, but it got to the point where I just wanted to be sedated. I told my mom, I was like, take me to an inpatient home and just have them drug me and I wanna wake up normal. And um, it's obviously not the best thought to have, but I was just desperate because I felt felt like my children were better off without me at the point that I was. I was worried that that's what I was gonna be forever um, because I didn't, I couldn't find any success stories out there about it, like I found postpartum anxiety, women getting through it, how they got through it, depression, how they got through it, but there wasn't much on postpartum psychosis. And so my mom took me to an inpatient um, facility and they turned me away since I had so much family support. And I'm so grateful for the family support, uh, but at the same time I was like, oh, I just wanna be here and like, just somebody help, somebody yeah. else. <laughs> yeah. but, right. I found so many places where you could go and get treatment with your baby by your side and they were all in other countries. None were within the U.S. And then one day I was finally researching it a little bit more and I found one woman's story, one postpartum psychosis story and that she had gotten through it. So I was like, okay, if she can get through it, then I can get through it. And months later, almost a year later, um, because I had to get through the guilt after, I had to get through the treatment. I'm sure that had to be huge. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why Um, am I feeling this way? And like, you know, you probably felt like, like you're a terrible person, you're not a terrible person, but I'm sure that that those thoughts were going through your mind. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, I felt guilty. Like, how could I, they weren't my thoughts, you know? Right, Um, right, right. How could could I think that? thoughts or urges have ever come through my mind. Um, 
and just being comfortable of being alone with my children again, being comfortable being alone with myself because I became suicidal. That took a while, but um, what really helped me was voicing what I was going through, voicing what I had gone through because it was one, it was a woman's story that saved me. Right. So I figured like God put me through this to be another story for somebody else who needs that strength. So. Wow. So that was, so you went through all of that. Now bring me out on the other side. Oh gosh. Well, it started with exercise as tacky as that sounds, <laughs> but, um, I really started to find myself again and thank goodness for my family for their support because um, definitely would not have gotten through it as easily with without them. Um, but just starting to work on me, I think as moms, we feel guilty if we do anything for ourselves, especially as new moms with brand new babies. Uh, but you cannot pour from an empty cup. And I would hear that over and over in the past. And I'm like, oh, I just kind of brushed it off. Like, that's a cute term, but it's, it's true. You cannot pour from an empty cup. And if you want to be the best wife, the best friend, the best mother, you have to make sure you're filling your cup too. And once I started to fill my cup, to exercise, to um, start taking time for myself, to start fueling my body properly, that's when I began to come through it. And I embraced doing things for myself because I knew it made me a better mother. I didn't want to give my kids leftovers of me. <laughs> wow. So that was quite a journey. What, what advice would you give anyone out there that may be suffering? They may have just, you know, had a baby and they're suffering from depression and, you know, they may not, they may have something similar to you, or it could just be that postpartum depression. What advice mm -hmm. would you give them? Mine would be, you are not alone. Like, I can't believe how many women, even people that I've known for years, once I shared my story, came to me saying they suffered with either postpartum anxiety or postpartum depression. And don't be, don't be ashamed of what you're going through. You didn't choose to go through it. Um, the biggest thing for me was knowing that this is not who I'm going to be forever. I always question, have my children lost their mom forever? But no, they got, they actually got a stronger mom back. They got a stronger mom and a stronger bond because being able to be around them without those thoughts or those feelings made our bond even stronger once I came out of it. So if you're going through that one, please reach out for help, um, whatever it is, whether it's family support or going to therapy or um, I know there's medications for it or the holistic route. If I could do it all over again, I would have gone the holistic route because I actually had some bad side effects from the medications I got put on um, that made things a little bit worse, but they work, they work for some people. But if I did it all over again, I would have tried the holistic route. But do not hide what you're going through. There is such a beautiful light on the other side. Um, and if you need somebody to reach out to, you can reach out to me. I've talked to mothers and I've talked even talked to dads that felt their wife was going through it. So you're not alone. Yeah, and I think sometimes that's the hardest thing is we want to be all perfect for the world and we don't want anyone to know that we have any problems. And I think like just coming forward and being vulnerable with people, you think they're all going to judge you and that they're going to be like, oh my gosh, and did you hear about this, this person? But really what's going to happen is people are going to reach out to you and they're going to want to be that support system. So. Mm -hmm. I think there's really power power in being vulnerable with people. And of course you wanna be vulnerable with the right people, just like Brene Brown yeah. said, not to just put it out there to people that haven't earned the right to hear your story. Mm -hmm. And um, so I really, I really love how you have come through everything and on the other side of it, and you're shining your light. And uh, I watched a video with Heather that I just like fell in love with you guys. And uh, she was talking about our value. And I just kind of want her to do a little bit of that because the biggest thing, the biggest mission that I truly have it, because of my story and everything I've been through and come out on the other side of is I want women to know their value and I want them to have that confidence and the self-esteem that they need so that they're not in situations that, you know, 
demean them in any way, where they're, you know, they're being oppressed in any way, and they just, I just think when you have confidence, you're not going to let yourself be abused in any way, you're going to step out of that. So I'm all about women having the confidence that they need. So tell us about our value. All right. So, um, I know I love this. I wish I could take 110% credit for it, but I went to an event and they did something similar to it. And it just, it touched me like it touched you when I watched my video. So I made my own version of it. Um, so the last time I did it, I did it with a $10 bill, but <laughs> I got a $1 bill today. Um, but I actually used that at church on Sunday and that has another message behind it. So so if I were to ask you what this is, and for those of you listening on the podcast, I'm holding a $1 bill. So some of you may say it's paper. Some of you may say it's money. Some of you may say it's a dollar. And it is a dollar because somebody who had power put value on it. And so if I take the dollar and I fold it in half, now it's wrinkled. Has the value changed? Yes, it has a wrinkle through it, but the value has not changed. The value is still a dollar. So then if I take the dollar and I totally just wrinkle it up, crush it, wrinkle it, has the value changed? No, it's still a dollar. It may be beaten up a little bit. It may have some bruises and wrinkles, but the value stays the same. So what if I completely rip Whoa, the dollar? Whoa, you just tore up money. Yes. <laughs> Let's get serious. What if I rip the dollar in half like I just did? It's still a dollar because I can tape it back together and then I still have a dollar. And so the same goes for you. When you were born, when you're put on this earth, whether you believe in God or you believe in the universe, you were created with so much value and value that nobody else has because money, yes, it has value, but once it's spent, it's gone and you can earn more. But you, there's one you on this earth and you have so much value. And just like I folded the dollar, maybe that is somebody who said something hurtful to you, or maybe they had an opinion about you that didn't feel good. And then when I crumpled the dollar, um, maybe that's something really major that you've gone through in the past. Like me with postpartum psychosis, that put so much guilt on me um, and lowered my confidence. But did that make my value any less? No. And then ripping the dollar in half. I'm sure sometimes in your life you felt like you've been just split in two by something that's happened to you or something somebody said or people's opinions on you or something that happened in your past. It does not change your value. The value is the same. So we have to, especially as women, we have to stop letting the opinions of others or letting images we see on social media devalue us because no matter what you've been told, no matter what you've been shown, no matter what you've been through, your value is still the same and you're absolutely priceless because when you're gone, you're gone. People can't earn more of you. We can't replace you. Money, we can. And a lot of times people say the most valuable thing on earth is money. No, the most valuable thing is you. So take a good look at yourself in the mirror today at your eyebrows, your nose, your lips, everything, and just be grateful for it because there's so much value there and do not let the opinion of other people depict how valuable you are. Yeah, find the value, right? Look for mm -hmm. the value because I think so many times women are ripping their, so instead when they look in the mirror, they're ripping themselves apart as they look at their mm -hmm. appearance. They're looking at what they don't like. They're looking at their nose, it's too big. Yes. Or they're looking at their butt, it's too big. I mean, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying like, or, oh my, I'm, you know, whatever it is. And if they would do the cup is half full instead of half empty scenario, I really believe looking at those positives, like your eyes are beautiful, your hair is gorgeous, um, your smile is out of sight, because then you're focusing on the positives. And don't you think the negatives start to fade them? Yes. Oh my gosh. I had such a complex with my nose <laughs> growing up. And in high school, I was like, one day I'll get a nose job. Um, the first day of freshman year, my big crush, it was my older brother's best friend came up to me and he was like a foot from my face, staring eye to eye. And I was like, oh my gosh, you must think I'm so pretty. And he goes, you know what, Heather? And I'm twirling my hair. I'm like, what? 
He goes, you have the big Huber nose. Huber is my maiden name. And I was crushed. Oh and I gosh. let, yes, I let that opinion put value on me. Like, how valuable am I? And I, every time I looked in the mirror, all I would see is my nose. And now that I have children of my own, my youngest has my exact nose. And I think she, of course, both my daughters are the most beautiful, but I think she's the most beautiful little girl in the world. And she has my nose and I don't ever want her to feel like her nose isn't perfect. So that was a wake up call for me. Like I need to love, love what I have. And that stupid guy in high school <laughs> that put oh, that complex on my nose. Is oh my gosh. Uh, and it is so <laughs> funny how the things that people say, we focus on the one negative thing mm -hmm. versus the hundred positives you probably heard. And, you know, if somebody, I have to use the Kathy Savage-ism, mm -hmm. if somebody told you you were a pineapple, you'd be like, what are you saying? I'm not a pineapple. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, and like, you're, you're accepting uh, what somebody said about you as gospel, like you must be that because they said that. Mm -hmm. and, and on the other aspect, your words are powerful. Yes. So you should be careful what you're saying to people and to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Those yes. whole I am statements. Yep. And you should be looking in the mirror and saying, I am beautiful. I am smart. I am worth it. I am worthy, you know, because that's what is going to build you up. And that when we are building ourselves up, it's then that we're going to build each other up and we're going to be building the women up in our lives instead of what? Gossiping. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So what did you do, you know, to build up your confidence besides working out, it had to be more than that to, to be able to own that stage the way that you do? Oh gosh. Well, it definitely comes with having a good coach, having a good sweat sisterhood for sure. Um, growing up, I was always one of the guys. So putting myself around women was actually out of my comfort zone. And I always had that, like the stereotype of women and gossip and this and that. So oh, I avoided yeah. Yeah, so I avoided it. Um, but surrounding myself around other women who are going for um, the same thing, just working to be the best version of themselves and to try to bring out the best in others played a huge role in growing my confidence and not just physical confidence, but confidence mentally and emotionally, confidence in going after my goals, going after my dreams. Um, and definitely personal development as well. Um, reading, reading some personal development books. I went to a Tony Robbins event. That was, that was oh amazing. My gosh. All right. Tell me all about the Tony Robbins event. I have been dying to go to one. <laughs> so I went to Unleash the Power Within and um, the beginning, I was kind of like closed off a little bit, but then I'm like, if you, you're here, just open up. Cause if you're not open, you can't hear. And that's, I love that term. If you're not open, you can't hear. Um, and I ended, I did the fire walk. So when now anytime, so, okay, I'll get going on a little tangent, but it's reminding <laughs> me of it. It's okay. <laughs> um, so if you, if you have something coming up or you have something that you have to do, or maybe say to someone and you're nervous for it, or you have anxiety around it, I want you to write down a list of five to 10 things you've overcome in your life. So for me, when I did this, it was um, the postpartum issues. It was minor heart attack, losing 55 pounds, getting out of a toxic relationship, all these things. And then I got to add walked on fire to it. And then on the other side of the paper, you put what you're nervous about and you look at it and you, it makes what you're nervous about seem so small. And it gives you that confidence because you're like, holy cow, if I could get through these things, which were major, major things, then I can do this little task that's in front of me. So I have really learned, as far as confidence goes, I just really learned to learn from my past. Instead of dwell on it, I, I, learned, I learned to take lessons from it. So I, my last name is Messenger. So I, like, I love the term, let your mess be your message. So yeah, I love that too. That should be your phrase. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I love that. That's so awesome. Because losing the weight, getting Miss Bikini Universe Pro, that's all great, but you can have this Bikini Universe body, but still have the mindset of the woman. Like for me, example, I, I still had the mindset of a woman who was 200 pounds and wouldn't go to the beach with her children when I had lost all my weight. Um, Cause I lost my weight and then I started competing. Um, and it wasn't until I started working on my mind as well that I fully got the confidence. So it just proves like confidence is not just physical appearance. It comes from within as well. Wow. I really love that. So, so you lost the 55 pounds and then you, you started feeling, you, how long, how long did it take you to transition from thinking like, you're over 200 pounds to accepting where you're at. Was that a long journey or did it kind of start to, as soon as you started competing, did you kind of own that then? I'm not sure if it was so much the competing that finally made me realize how far I had come, but the people that I was around because I started competing, I had a sisterhood and Kathy Savage and then all of her coaches that they just poured so much belief into you. And then um, within what I do for work, I'm surrounded by so many uplifting people as well. Um, because sometimes we'll hear it from family members and while it means a lot, we're like, oh yeah, you're my mom, you have to tell me that. Or you're my husband, you have to tell me that. But when it starts coming from strangers that um, are on the same mission and your competition, because you're in a competition with these women, but they're still pouring belief into you and saying, go after, you've reached this goal, now go after that one. And um, that just really started op ma making me open my eyes. And when I actually took the physical, because I was so focused on the physical result part, um, I, at first, of course, I wanted to just feel better. And then once I started losing the weight, I was focusing on that, but I wasn't focusing on what was going on up here. And once I started working on the mindset part, that's when that's when everything changed. And it, it all started with who I was surrounding myself with. Because I truly believe you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. So check your five and see if you need to make some changes. <laughs> wow. And, and I just listened to a podcast about that with um, Paul Brunson, who I've had on before. You guys will have to go back and check out that episode. Uh, he was talking a lot about if you're in a room and you have these big ideas and you're doing all this stuff and you're growing, you might not relate to the people that you've been around all the time as much anymore. And it's not through any fault of theirs. It's just that you, when you start noticing that, that's the time that you need to realize you, you're growing and that you need to be surrounding yourself with people that are on that same wavelength, like they they have big ideas and they're reading books. And you know, you know, have you really? He was talking about have you been around people if they're not reading books, you know, you know, and they're not talking about books they read, or like you're around someone that's yeah, oh gosh, you know, Mel Robbins. Oh wow, that sounds cool. I need to check that book out. I can't wait to read what you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. But if you're around someone that is not like, it's just so weird, the night and day, the difference between being around people that are just ready to be like, oh, you did this? I want to do that. Versus people that are kind of still in that white box and they're not thinking outside of it at all. So mm -hmm. I really believe in that. Yes. Yes. And it, it's like, if you're on a weight loss journey, you can't expect to spend all your time with people who don't care about their health to encourage you. So you have to bring yourself around people that care about their health and are going to cheer you on. Um, if you have a business goal, you can't be spending your time around closed minded people. You have to go around open minded people that are going to encourage you and let you share your vision with them. Um, and people will always have opinions when I, so at first I heard, Heather, you know, you're getting, you're getting a little chunky. And so I was like, all right, time to start working on myself, time to lose weight. So I start losing weight. You know, you're getting too skinny. So, so I'm like, okay, now I'm, now I'm going to do a competition. I'll put on some muscle and fill out a little bit. You know, you're getting too muscular. And so you can't please everybody. <laughs> so you have to just 
I love on your, that. Oh my god. yourself with people that are going to lift you up and that have similar goals too. So no matter what and I did. That was, somebody... that was a whole people pleasing thing, right? Yes. And <laughs> actually, I think sometimes what that is, is they're just uncomfortable with your changing. Mm -hmm. And they want to have some control over it because they feel like they're losing you a bit. Yeah. You know, you're to this or you're to that. And I can't tell you how many times when I have someone losing weight, um, you know, why don't you eat a cookie, you know, or you need to have a piece of cake or, you know, it's just this, I feel like it's kind of crabs in a bowl. Like, you know, that you're climbing mm -hmm. to the top and people are going to pull you back down. Yeah. The whole crabs in a bucket. It's fish yeah. in a bowl. <laughs> No, I think it is crabs in a bucket because I've heard that before. Crabs in a bucket, okay. Yes. <laughs> Do you have crabs in your life that are pulling you down? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. What did it feel like when you went on the stage, you did your round, and they called you out, and you won, and you became a pro? What was that feeling? Oh, my gosh. I started crying for one because I was like, is this really happening? Because a year before that, I was curled in a ball at my mother's house with the door locked, afraid of hurting myself and my children. Um, and in Fitness Universe, they do the theme wear. And, you know, I do Wonder Woman. And that's why I chose Wonder Woman, because I want to show women that you like, even though you may not feel it or see it right now, you have so much incredible strength inside you that's just waiting to come out and unfortunately for me it took going through something like that to realize the strength I had the purpose I had the potential I had so when I when they called my name I, I think I stood there at first and like, like that are you could talking not to me been. are you serious right yeah. now? <laughs> <laughs> me um, but I, I have a picture of it and my hands are like that oh my, like, gosh. oh my gosh that's so and awesome it was, I just felt good. And I was very proud. Um, it was nothing to do with the trophy or the body. It just had everything to do with strength and representing women that are going through, um, not just postpartum issues, but any type of issues just to know, like I said, know your strength, know your worth, know your purpose, know, um, that no matter what you're going through, there's, a warrior like Wonder Woman inside you just waiting to waiting to come out you just have to find it and not not give up on it um, and what was neat is um, a lot of local news networks and papers once I won reached out to me to do an article on a local Miss Bikini Universe Pro and I kind of did a flip on them I was like well the reason I did it is to spread awareness on um, women empowerment postpartum awareness I was like, so if you want to do an article with me, that's what it's going to be about. And they agreed. So that was good. <laughs> wow. I really love that. And, it, and it's just basically if you are willing, even if you're in a really low place right now, if you're willing to just put one foot in front of the other and do the work, your transformation is just waiting on you. And, mm -hmm. you know, looking at Heather's story from where she was to where she is is a testament to what you can achieve when you just believe you can do it. Yep. And again, those five, you have to make sure you're surrounding yourself with, right. with the right people. And right. like you said earlier, the voices, it's not just the voices you hear on the outside telling you your worth or your value or opinions. It's what you're telling yourself. So for me, if I constantly was telling myself, I have anxiety, I have depression, then I, that's what I would be living in. Our thoughts become beliefs and then our beliefs become our actions, you know? So, um, yeah, it's what you think about and what you allow yourself to, to think about and dwell on. And, and, and I really like the whole thing you say about mindset, because it's just, it's like flipping that switch, because if you focus on your problems, all you're going to have is problems. And, if you focus on a solution, you know, or if you focus on the good things in your life, there's going to be a whole lot more uh, mm -hmm. good things. It's, yeah. it's crazy, but it's actually biblical. <laughs> it's, it's the law of attraction, you know, what you think. Yeah. It's yeah. like, if you think you're going to get stuck, you're going to buy a certain car, you start seeing that car everywhere. 
or like when I, when we tried to have a family and I thought I was pregnant, like I saw pregnant women everywhere. <laughs> and so it's, it is, thoughts become things. Thoughts are so powerful. And once you learn that you can control your thoughts, that's when everything changes because yeah, sometimes anxious thoughts or depressed thoughts may try to creep back into my mind and I can choose to hold hands with them and keep going or I can choose to push them away and replace it with a different thought. So knowing that you control your thoughts is the big game changer. And monitor your thoughts. You know, I've had people in my studio um, because I caught them saying, you know, I don't like let them say negative things about themselves when they're in my studio. So if I catch them doing it, I'm like, you need to go home. You need to, every time you have a negative thought, I want you to write it down. And at the end of the week, I want you to look at it. And would you talk to your best friend this way mm -hmm. that you're talking to yourself? And I want you to really flip that switch because it's really, it's really flipping that switch. And sometimes it takes you a while to get what that means, flipping that switch. But like, I took a lot of mindset training through Savage, our coach, mm -hmm. Savage Fitness. And uh, it was all, it's all about how you're looking at something. The perception you're having could be completely wrong. And if you allow yourself to be open, as Heather said, and just, how can I think about this differently? And how can I flip that switch to be on a more positive note? You'll be surprised how your life is going to change. For sure. It's so powerful. Pa totally powerful. Well, now let's talk about Heather competing again. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> We're both sending this Vegas one out. I had to have my hamstring reattached. And you had an explant. Mm-hmm. Now, yes. Yes. And I, I can totally relate to the whole thinking about, do you explant? Do you keep what you got? You know, tell me why you had an explant, what it is, and why you're going to compete again. So last November was uh, what I thought was going to be my last show, because the past two shows I did, my body was just fighting against me. I still had good results. Um, and the one in June, I ended up getting second place, only six points from the world title, which would have been great. But, um, but my body was fighting against me and all these sorts of things started happening. And I just couldn't find answers to them. And a friend of mine put me, who was a former competitor as well, put me into a breast implant illness group. Um, now it's maybe two years ago now. It's not Angie Lee, is it? No. Oh, um, okay. And... So she put me in and I saw her at an event like five months later. I said, that page you put me in. I'm like, what is that? I thought I didn't believe in it. I didn't even take a look at it. She goes, well, somebody put me in. So I put you in because I know you have breast implants. And so I just kind of ignored the page. And then I started getting these health issues and I wanted to obviously get to the root of it. So I went to a functional medicine doctor and he started running all these tests. He found that my hormones were off. My bilirubin was really high, which explained, I noticed that my eyes had gotten really yellow and gray and also bloodshot. So that explained that. Um, and then my body was starting to create autoimmune diseases. My autoimmune markers were through the roof. Um, and I also had quite a few different things with my blood work were off. And then the symptoms I was having too. And I told him, I said, do you think that that could be an option and he said, well, with your age, your lifestyle, your nutrition, there's really no reason and no other answers that I'm finding that could be a cause for this. And he has had other patients that could barely even like, they were so weak, they couldn't even walk into his office and they explanted, which is removing your implants. Um, and he said within two weeks, they would just walk in his office, a different person. So Obviously, I was like, well, I'm going to make sure that I have cleared all my, I've looked through everything that it could possibly be before I take that route. Um, but there were, there were no other answers. So I just went by faith that that's what it was. And May 25th, I explanted. And it was absolutely incredible because within four hours of being home from the surgery, my dad came to bring us dinner so we didn't have to make it. 
and he goes, how are you feeling? And I go, oh, I'm good. And I looked in the mirror that's by our front door to see the new me, <laughs> my new size. And I looked in the mirror at my eyes and I started crying. And my dad's like, what's wrong? And I was like, my eyes, my eyes. And he starts panicking. He's like, what's wrong with your eyes? <laughs> and um, they were tears of joy because they were white again and they were more, they were bigger. They weren't swollen. Yeah. Um, and so my husband came in the room and he started tearing up and he's like, I have my wife back. This is what oh. it was. Yeah. And I so I, I ended up calling my friend who put me in the page and told her that I had explanted and she said she was getting ready to call me and that she had gotten sick and had no answers, spent thousands at specialists and she explanted three months before me. And um, so last month I ended up redoing all the blood work that was off and everything is back to normal. So that's awesome. That's yeah. so great. Oh my gosh. And so now you're going to compete again with the natural you. Yes. So um, I'm all, I practice what you preach. So if I say that I love the new me and I'm proud of it, then like I'll be willing to go and rock the stage as Yay. a Miss Bikini Universe Pro is the real me. So I was going to be done, but I think it will be a, a neat and bold statement to go out there and rocket el natural <laughs> <laughs> well i love it and it's because i think too the things we tell ourselves about what makes us beautiful are not necessarily true mm -hmm. yes you know? exactly yeah it's the real you it's the real you that's beautiful so you own that and you go rock mm -hmm. it rock that stage i'll be right there next to you because Yay! i plan on trying to come back in june um this has been a long road with the hamstring reattachment. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I'm not allowed to, you know, do anything. And uh, I've <laughs> been harnessed up with my leg anchored, you know, oh. it's been crazy. So yesterday, or was it, I think it was Tuesday, I went and I spray tan because that made me feel better now that I don't have a harness on. I was like, a spray, I felt, a spray tan fixes everything. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I feel better. Got my hair done today. And so it was, it was raining and I wasn't thinking, I forgot I wasn't allowed to run because it just happened. Oh, no. And um, I ran to my car and I was like, oh my God, I just ran. I'm not supposed to run. Oh my God, I can run. Yay! <laughs> I was like, I can run. So when it's time and I'm allowed, yeah, uh, I was like, that was encouraging because, you know, it's just when something happens to you like that and your whole world is wrapped around being physical, like when you had your heart attack, it's, um, yeah, and I've been scared to death to move the wrong way. Mm -hmm. It's you have to find a new way of existing and being you and your identity, you know, was all wrapped up in that. And uh, so I have found a lot of new things, and, but I am really ready to start moving. <laughs> so I plan on seeing you in June. I can't uh, wait. And I'm excited. I don't, I don't think I'll be Supergirl again. I'll have to be somebody else. Yeah, I know. I was thinking if I'm going to bring something new, but I think we'll I'm going to do Wonder Woman again, you but I think, I'm gonna do the, oh, yeah. I think I'm going to do the warrior version because I'm definitely going to need a new top now. <laughs> the <laughs> top does not fit anymore. Um, so maybe I'll come as the, the new. I don't know. Maybe I'll do Supergirl again. We'll see. But we're going to be, you know, basically that that's the thing. The warrior within and mm -hmm. the superheroes that you guys all are just step into that. And uh, I just want to acknowledge Heather so much for just being that light and that strength that we can all possess and just being so open and beautiful to talk to, to us today from her heart and share so many life lessons. I just want to thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. Thank you guys for listening today. Where can we catch you on social media? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's just my name, Heather Messenger with no space, um, Heather, and then M-E-S-S-E-N-G-E-R. And then uh, Facebook, you can find me on there as well. 
Awesome. And if you guys have any questions today, make sure you leave them on Facebook. I'll make sure Heather comes back and answers any of your questions. Make sure to give her some love and give a great review so our podcast gets a lot of light and it helps more women out there. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this episode of the Sisterhood of Sweat.